All right, Gulf Coast Independent Wrestling fans, welcome back to the Front Row Fanatics. As we're continuing our review of Ultimate Wrestling's uh, <laughs> Harvest Havoc show. I'm sorry, I'm a little bit disoriented from gurgling lots of beers and all the bizarre individuals and happenings. It's been about a month since we did one of these yes, two. Over, so over a month, you know, so we're kind of getting back into the groove. So uh, bear with us and let's continue our review of uh, Ultimate Wrestling's Harvest Haddock. All right, match number four was a cruiserweight title match and it had the champion, the bruiserweight Maze. Maze sucks! It. Yeah! <laughs> Love that studio audience. Maze sucks! Little people. Man, I'll no. table. Uh, anyway, he took on Gulf Coast favorite Scotty Rays. Hell yeah! Uh, before the match, I don't know. Did did anybody notice if Mays hid something there by the ring? Did anybody I see know, that? He was kind of uh, skulking yeah. around like because he sucks. <laughs> that too. But he was skulking around like the insidious little uh, creepy individual that he is, man. Right. You know, there was some controversy a while back with him supposedly loading that knee he pad. Had. But let's get on with the match. You know, this match had everything you would expect. From a match with Maze and Scotty Rays. Maze sucks. I've noticed Maze. He's taking on more of a. Uh, how can I put it? He's using more of a power attack than actual cruiserweight. I think he's trying to reestablish the bruiserweight persona. Probably, man. but I still have to say, still has the probably the best drop kick on the Gulf Coast. Still and, uh, sucks. I know another wrestler who posted on a message board that said his was better than Maze's, man. Really? Yes. Yikes. He has been a guest on our show too. Who was that? That would be Mr. Marcus Gibbs. Oh, okay. Marcus, uh, Marcus. Oh, Marcus. yeah. We get a little love in the crowd for Mr. Gibbs. Grocery money. Yeah. Uh, it was baby's mama. But, you know, like I said, May's uh, best drop kiss, drop kick on the Gulf Coast. Scotty Ray's quick as a hiccup. You know, it's hard to get your hands on this guy. The later stages of the match saw Scotty Ray's in, in control of the match, and that's when it got a little sketchy. You know, May's ventured to the outside of the ring. I thought I saw him fidgeting with that <laughs> knee pad, and it was not too long after that he gave Scotty Rays the bruise your face, face, which incapacitated Scotty Rays. I mean, the bruise your face is a vicious move that will incapacitate you, but Scotty Rays was out. Yeah, he was and like, that allowed him to get the one, two, three. It was like the lime in the coconut and see him in the morning, man. Right. You know, it was done. You know. So the winner and still your cruiserweight champ, the bruiserweight maze. Yeah, that, sucks. Tur that turd bag from New York. That's right. I'm still talking. Start to spreading the news. That's, That's right. right. The South is the sucks. South is You swallow. Sucks. sucks. Maze sucks. You swallow. The South says something to you, maze. Hey, bring it on. All right, moving right along. Match like number five. Saw one of the Gulf Coast favorites, Omega, taking on newcomer. Well, basically a newcomer to Ultimate Wrestling. Live Wire, Justin Overstreet. <laughs> And I looked at this match as like a veteran versus a rookie. Now, uh, Omega is by no means old, but I'm calling him a veteran because he has a few years on Justin Overstreet. You, Justin, you got a lot of years on Justin Overstreet. Exactly. Now, let's, call, let's call it the way it is. Now, Justin he's Overstreet a seasoned veteran. is not a rookie per se, but he's still pretty new to the business. So I looked at this like a veteran versus rookie. Overstreet Great. improving a lot. You know, I see a promising future for him maybe if he stays on track. Uh, good to see Omega back as always. But the winner of this match was Omega via the Oshimai. Right, you know, and like you said, you're bringing in this Justin Overstreet was one of the new, fresh, young faces Ultimate brought in when they had their little roster turnover there and everything. And I must admit, I, I paid attention to Justin Overstreet over the course of time, watched him, you know, and he drastically improving. Right. G gave a good account of himself in the match against Omega, you know. He did a flying cross body that was uh, excellent. I thought it was very good. So, you know, I only see uh, a bright future for him in there, but, you know, he's against uh, one tough, and we've seen Omega in various promotions all over the oh, Gulf yeah. Coast, bleeding buckets, fighting one-on-one, two-on-one, three-on-one, four-on-one, colts and folds and, <laughs> yeah, you know, and all exactly. kinds of crazy-ass stuff all over the place. And, you know, he's double tough, so, you know, Justin Overstreet gave a good account of himself against Omega, but, you know, what can you say? He's Omega. There you go. Moving right along, match number six. This was very interesting. We had the ultimate legend himself, Black Sheep Bobby Dahl, teaming up with his new find, should we say, the monster Clarice, to take on one half of the Rock and Roll Express, Robert Gibson and McNasty, the hillbilly pimp. And uh, going into this, I've, I've seen videotape. Was not Uncle Jim in Robert Gibson's Yes, corner? he was. I, I <sighs> failed to failed to mention that. I'm sorry, Uncle Jim. We love you. That's right, but you need to get back in Bobby's corner, Uncle Jim. Barbie doll. Do hey, right hey shut up, you. Um, going, you know, I've seen video of Clarice before. This is my <laughs> first time seeing him live. Uh, no one seems to be able to match strength with this guy. You know, both uh, Robert Gibson and McNasty tried, and 
couldn't live up, you know, he's a huge monster of a man. Uh, they tried at one point to simultaneously pin Clarice. He threw him off like a sack of potatoes. And I saw Gibson and McNasty even try to do a double shoulder tackle, and Clarice just laid them out. So Bobby Dahl has made a very strategic move in acquiring the services of Clarice. Uh, the end of the match saw Clarice nail Robert Gibson with what I call a double-handed sit-down choke slam. And uh, after the match, uh, they started making some stipulations for their next encounter involving Robert Gibson's hair. Right. And so uh, Bobby Dahl is obviously not in just uh, content with defeating his mentor, former partner, and ex-manager Uncle Jim, Robert Gibson, and also uh, the hillbilly pimp McNasty there. You know, he's brought in Clarice, uh, an individual I've watched uh, several times in XIW in Pascagoula, Mississippi, right. over there. So, uh, you know, I've seen him before. He, Like you said, he's a beast. So uh, Bobby made a smart move, uh, you know. This time he got the upper hand on Uncle Jim and Robert Gibson. This is I mean, you're twice talking, in a row he's beaten Robert Gibson. And you're talking about a Hall of Fame legend in Robert Gibson. He is one of the guys that defined tag team wrestling. And Bobby Dahl getting the upper hand on him. Maybe he's in the back of Robert Gibson's mind or something. We don't know. But, you know, it's all about the respect. And right now, Bobby and Clarice got the respect. Okay, well, moving right along, we're going to try to get the last match in. And then we have a special guest coming up in the next segment. It was a match for the Ultimate Wrestling Heavyweight title. Uh, before the match, the, the champion, Death Row, came out and stated he wanted Omega, but Omega had already been in action, so he got the next best thing in the Ding Dong from Hong Kong, <laughs> Buddha Bushido. Uh, going into this match, of, of course the fans gave Bushido a, a great welcome. Absolutely, as they always do. And Bushido, believe it or not, started off the match with some offense, just hitting and chopping uh, Death Row. Judy but, chops, baby, Judy chops. There you go, but Death Row... Uh, Pretty much decimated uh, Buddha Bushido. Actually had him for a one, two, three pin. Picked him up. Decided to inflict some more punishment. Bad mistake by the champion. Yes, that was a critical mistake because in the later stages of the match, Danny Rowland was rendered unconscious in the ring. Danny, Danny who? Danny Rowland. Danny Wright. Excuse me. Damn. Hey. Oh, hey, you, you've been stealing my beer like Murray does, Mountain man. Dude. I bet you got, I bet you got some liquor up in there, man. <laughs> Internet's getting drunk. Look, it's not just me. He's doing it too. Let me re rephrase D -D that. D -D <laughs> <laughs> Referee Danny Wright was rendered unconscious, which allowed Omega to come in and crack Death Row in the head with that that stick. That tree. That, that was tree. a tree. That wasn't just a stick. I was like, ah! He rolled Buddha Bushido over. Danny he got revived. Danny uh, Wright. One, two, three. Your new Ultimate Wrestling Heavyweight Champion, Buddha Bushido. Buddha, 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 and just Buddha. just as a, a couple of after the match, Death Row choke slammed Danny Rowland through the mat. Danny, who? <laughs> Why am I saying that? Danny, you right. Stop Danny drinking right. my damn Danny beer, right. man. He right. choke slammed referee Danny Wright. Look, I've corrupted internet. <laughs> He's coming over to the dark side, man. After, <laughs> after he choke slammed Danny Wright, he proceeded to throw tables and basically throw a fit. And just for the record, I want to point out this was Buddha Bushido's first win. Death Row lost his title to an opponent that had never won a match. Woo! What more can you say? All I can say is ultimate wrestling right there. You know, you swerved the hell out of this. Curveball. We'll be right back. Curveball, beanball, knuckleball. We'll be right back. <laughs>